What in the heck is a bare metal cloud? How could a cloud server be as good as putting a server into co-location? If you're like me, you stay awake night after night pondering questions like these. So we went on a quest to Phoenix, Arizona to go figure out the answers of like, where do cloud servers come from? But hold on a sec. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we have something super fun. I was able to go out to the Phoenix Nat Beta Center and check out how they operate their bare metal cloud. And we got to do something that uh, not a lot of folks get to do because we were able to go and install a special server into the cloud so we can see exactly how it works. Now we've already been to the Phoenix Nap Data Center. We did a video there about two years ago. So if you wanna see how like all the chillers work and all that kind of stuff, we'll link that in the description. But today we are focused on the bare metal cloud. To a lot of folks, cloud servers are just instances, but there are real servers that are running those cloud instances and you can actually get an entire server bare metal that you can go run whatever you want. And so the folks at Phoenix Nap, they have their brand new fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable Sapphire Rapid servers. And I said, hey, uh, wouldn't it be cool if we could show people how these bare metal servers work. Now for full disclosure, we are gonna say that Phoenix, Snap, and Intel are sponsoring this video because we had to fly out there. The cloud bills, by the way, were not cheap to go put this together. And we had to do something special that a normal customer just wouldn't be able to go do. So we definitely got some special access. Like everything on STH, everything is editorially independent. They didn't get to see this before it goes live, but uh, you know, they did help out. So we are gonna call that out. Now, given the fact that we've already been to the Phoenix, Snap data center, we got to see uh, what happens in like two years in the data center. There are still the same cages for a lot of the payment processing healthcare and government type entities that are there. But there's also a lot of expansion that took place. For example, the second floor that was pretty new when we showed up in 2021 was almost completely full. They'd expanded it and everything. And we also got to see the progress on the adjacent data center that they had just announced, which is a zero water use data center, in, which is important in Phoenix, Arizona, because it's a desert. We're going at such a fast pace that we have, we're growing our current building and uh, we're planning on building a, a, a campus next door. Our new building will have uh, three times the capacity that our current building has. And then we also have sustainability goals. So zero water usage and also uh, biodiesel fuel. But this time going to the Phoenix Snap Data Center, uh, number one, we arrived in a little bit of style since we got to go in a uh, Rivian R1S, which is super fun. But we also got the opportunity to go look at things like inside the Phoenix Snap cages. So while Phoenix Snap has cages for its other customers and other things like other cloud providers and stuff like that that are there, they also have their own infrastructure that they run in their own cages in the data center. And that is where their bare metal cloud resides. The big drop EMC is the the ease of use and the flexibility. It is unique, it is different. It, it, is, it is in our core of the way it's delivered, but the clients really uh, appreciate uh, the quick turnaround, the, quick, the ease of use of it, uh, and also the flexibility of, of consumption. Something that they would normally themselves have to do and would take weeks and weeks to be able to provision, now they can do it in a matter of a minute or two. So when we were inside, we had the opportunity to go and pull a node that we would be using and actually put it into production in the cloud. This was a super micro based Intel Xeon Platinum server. The standard D3 M6 extra large instance has two of these Xeon Platinum 8452Y processors or 36 core, 72 threads. They also have a half terabyte of memory, dual 25 gigabit ethernet that's bonded. And then also there are, I think two four terabyte NVMe SSDs. These are pretty substantial servers. But since the goal was to get a node, put it into the environment, and then show people you know, how we're using it and what it's like, uh, I didn't wanna just go and just pull a random server. I wanted to make sure that we were using a server that I saw while we were there. And so we did something a little bit tricky. We actually populated the server that I was gonna use with only 256 gigabytes of memory. So the rest of the fleet all has 512, but our specific instance that we're using for this, that one only has 256. 56 gigs. But what about performance? Because that's what a lot of folks really care about. Well, there are a couple things here. So because we are using the new fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable processors, we get things like the new AMX extensions for AI inference. We also get features like SGX because Phoenix app enables the SGX feature. So if you don't know what SGX is, it allows you to create secure enclaves for confidential computing. That's something that a lot of regulated industries and uh, government agencies and stuff like that like to have as a feature. And so that's how you would do it on a bare metal server like this. But as you can see in the server, we had 72 physical cores, 
144 threads. And so to test it, my best idea was let's take two physical servers. We actually managed to get a pair of the Xeon Platinum 8452Ys. And uh, you know, let's get some physical servers here in the STH lab. And then also we had the cloud version that we're running in the bare metal cloud. And let's just compare the performance between them. And so we ran our normal workloads on the Dell PowerEdge R760, as well as the Supermicro Hyper systems and the Phoenix Snap bare metal cloud instance. And we saw that the performance was pretty darn close. It was all within what we would consider a margin of error. But I wanted to go a little bit further. And so I pulled our AMX, which is the AI inferencing, as well as some of the AVX512 workloads that we ran previously on Sapphire Rapids and, uh, and ran them on all three servers. And what did we see? We saw pretty darn close performance there as well. So not only are we getting the performance just kind of in traditional workloads, but also in some of the accelerated workloads. So one really fun use case that I thought about was like, hey, if you're an organization that you don't have these new processes in house yet, you're not really sure if you want to deploy them or if you want to wait. Well, this is something that you can actually go use today. You can spin up a server for an hour, a week, and a month, like, you know, however long you need. And you can go and test out new features like AMX for the AI inferencing, like SGX for the confidential computing, all these types of things that you get with the new processors, you can actually just go try out and really easily. And the cool thing is that if you do that, you can also get a good sense of performance because we're basically equal to the performance that we saw on just standard 2U servers. This year, we plan to expose more accelerated that are dedicated, for example, on the GPU side. We also plan to expose more of the actual acceleration that is happening within the processor, such as for the fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable processor line. Now, aside from the CPU performance, something else I just want to talk about real quick is the networking side. Instead of having to go and set up your own network and have 25 gig networking and all that kind of stuff, these have dedicated dual bonded 25 gig ethernet adapters. And these are the Intel 25 gig, so the EA10 25 gig network adapters. And those dual 25 gig links are super important because they allow you to deliver things like storage or they allow you to go from server to server in the Phoenix Snap architecture. And so if you're at bare metal cloud and you have a whole bunch of, you know, cloud instances, you have a lot of networking performance between them. And then if you want to get out to the rest of the world, there are a bunch of options. Phoenix Snap has a giant meet me room that I actually got to go in, which is super fun. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to hear me in there because it was loud in these data centers the entire time we were there. But there are a ton of different providers that are in this meet me room. And some of the providers I think folks are going to really want to see are things like Amazon, so AWS, as well as Google Cloud. Now I will say I did see a couple cages for a third very large public cloud provider that was putting in servers and you know a pop there. But I don't know if we're allowed to talk about who that is just yet. But I will just say it's a very large third cloud provider. And since Phoenix Snap has direct fiber connectivity to these large clouds and even you know infrastructure from these cloud providers in their data center, it gives you the opportunity to do things like you use Phoenix Snap as like a neutral site and then push things out to other cloud providers. So if other cloud providers have different features that maybe you want to use, but you want to keep your data centralized, you can actually go do that at Phoenix Snap. And the Phoenix Snap pricing is a lot, uh, a lot lower for the performance than if you were to go to something like an AWS or Google or something like that. Today, customers use Bare Metal Cloud for optimization of workloads. Uh, typically very intensive workloads that need a lot of performance. So Bare Metal Cloud versus AWS or a hyperscaler in general offers a lot of, uh, it offers a lot of benefits. Now, since this started with me physically installing a server, folks are gonna wonder like, what's the difference between going to a data center and just doing co-location? And we use several different co-location facilities. We've been doing colo for over 10 years at this point. Phoenix Snap is not one of those yet, but they might be in the future. And what I can tell you is that there are a few notable differences. First, the Bare Metal Cloud is more like a cloud experience. You just go in, you find the instance type, the you know, bare metal server that you want. You pick it out of the web UI. You say, hey, this is the region I want. This is the instance I want. Here's the OS I want to install. And then you're able to just go and launch it. And if you've ever done co-location, you know there's a lot more steps to getting a server online than that. For example, you have to go order a server that has to get built and then has to get shipped. And then you have to go put it in the data center. You then have to hook it up to networking. And speaking of networking, you also need to get bandwidth. And inevitably, whenever you try buying bandwidth, you're going to hit one of those sales reps that calls you incessantly every quarter just to make sure that like, even though you've told them no a billion times that this just might not, you know, maybe this is the time. We get calls all the time from that and it's just so annoying. But in the bare metal cloud, it's all done for you. And last year we showed you how you can use this cloud to set up a five node Proxmox cluster for like $1. And that cluster was super easy to set up using the web GUI. You can go see it. At the same time, the fourth gen Intel Xeon scalable instances that we're using, they were not public when we started this project. So we had to actually use the API, which we hadn't used before. It took a couple minutes, but we were able to go and get a server launch 
no problem. So for folks that don't wanna use the web GUI and wanna have a more efficient way to go manage your infrastructure, you can use the APIs to do that. But that's also another great difference between this and co-location. When you're done, you can just shut down the instance and, and you're not paying anymore for it. In a co-location facility, you have to go get the servers out, you have to get the, everything cleaned up, you have to make sure all your contracts are done, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a lot different. We just went through that with one of our labs just uh, about a couple months ago. And so it's something that is very fresh in my mind, the difference between decommissioning everything. And the other experience difference between the bare metal cloud and co-location is frankly just that there are other services available. Not only are there services to just go and say like, hey, I want to deploy an OS or Rancher or a VMware thing or anything like that. There are also just things like you can get network storage just delivered over the network. Phoenix Snap Data Center as a service goal is to provide what you're used to inside your four walls in a co-location environment. At its heart, you have co-location. Uh, we also have offer network hub services, so you can bring your own carriers. We have about 40 distinct providers in Phoenix Metro alone. Uh, you can bring in interconnectivity from any of the hyperscalers that we offer locally in our facilities. Uh, and you can also take uh, advantage of, of infrastructure services like bare metal cloud. Plus, also tiered, tiered storage is now available. So we have different storage options. Based on performance profile, you can do object storage, you can do NFS attached storage, or you can even set up storage arrays within instance types of bare metal cloud. And that's not to say that co-location is bad in any way. You could totally go get a cabinet at Phoenix Snap and then just go use the bare metal cloud to go and scale up if you need, you know, while you're waiting for another server or something like that, you can go use it just to scale capacity. But I wanna be 100% clear that when we say that this is like a co-location bare metal experience, in some ways it, it very much is. There are a lot of cloud providers out there that say they give you like, you know, bare metal like performance or something like that. But here you can actually launch the Supermicro HTML5 IKVM directly from the Phoenix Nap web interface. So you can have access to that KVM. And you might ask like, why do you even care? Like who would want anything like that? And I can tell you exactly why you would. If you've ever had a network interface decide to rename itself, for example, in Ubuntu, and you try rebooting a system and it just kind of hangs, it never gets back to the OS, so you can't SSH into it. You're wondering what the heck is going on. Well, you can just go log in to the remote console and go and set your network interface to optional and that's the easy way to go fix that. We just reviewed a Supermicro 2U dual socket Sapphire Rapid server, and it's the exact same process where you log into the HTML5 IKVM, and then you go do these steps to be able to boot back into an OS when uh, a server is not coming online. This was a super fun opportunity to go look at the Phoenix Nap bare metal cloud infrastructure and see where cloud servers come from. I was able to install a Supermicro fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable node, make sure that I knew that I was using the one that we installed because it only had 250 six gigs of memory instead of a full half terabyte. And then I was able to access it remotely via APIs, the web interface, and even things like IKVM, SSH, you name it. And the best part was that we didn't have to go do all the deployment steps to actually get servers into the environment. We didn't have to pay somebody to go monitor the environment itself. And, uh, and also we didn't have to pay anybody to go decommission it. It was just done automatically, just like a cloud server, except buying the bare metal cloud service is less expensive than if you're gonna go buy instances at other cloud providers. And I just wanna say thank you again to Ian and Frank for hosting us at the Phoenix Nap data center and showing us around, letting us show you where cloud servers come from and showing you that there are real bare metal servers backing these instances. Now, if you wanna go see all the kind of cool stuff of the Phoenix Nap data center, definitely go check out that video down below. And if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.